Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this chess openings video on the London system. The London has become unbelievably popular from beginner, intermediate, advanced, up to the title player level because it's super easy to learn and the plans are pretty flexible. In this video, I'm going to spend about 15 minutes showing you how to play it and then I will play two practice games against my subscribers and you should know that I also have a London course that if you'd like to check it out to take your knowledge to the next level, in the description on my website. I've also put the moves that I'm about to show you in the description. You can copy paste those moves into any analysis board on any chess website that you wish, use an openings database, analyze with an engine and so on and so forth to take your understanding of the game to the next level. So the London system begins with the queen's pawn two squares to d4 and for black the two most common responses are just the mirror image d5 uh, and knight to f6. For anything else, like some gambits that immediately target your pawn, like the England Gambit, which is wildly popular, shout out to the video of Gotham Chess, one of my favorite creators, uh, you're gonna have to fill in the gaps a little bit, okay? So if you get hit with something you don't know, it's gotta be out there and you can research it. So we're gonna begin with d5, and the London is really this bishop coming to f4. You can do it after knight to f3 and then bishop to f4. Personally, I like to commit Bishop to f4 right away, because I don't really know if my knight is going to go here all that much. There might be some move orders where it does not. Now, what I'm going to show you is a typical position that you are after in the London. Then we are going to show Black's most challenging responses to the London. And I'm going to kind of tell you a little bit about how to study this. Cool? Wonderful. So let's say the players just develop. You're going to play e3 completing one side of what we call a pyramid on this uh, over here and then the pyramid will be complete like this you want to buy illuminati fans uh by all means uh you know rejoice so the other battle is going to be for the e4 and e5 squares you already see that we're controlling this square quite well and as we continue to develop our pieces uh the e5 square is very much up for grabs in my hypothetical example, black is attacking us with a flank pawn c5 that is the most challenging response to the London system because it immediately creates queenside play with the queen and potentially the knight because our bishop has abandoned the queenside. But stick with me for a second. The exact moves are not ultra important. I'm more so getting to the critical position of our opening. The bishop on d3, the light squared bishop, stands inside of the pyramid, okay? Targeting the enemy king if the king ever goes short castle. Also, the bishop is just very safe here. And the reason we've played this side of the pyramid is so that if the opponent were to play something like c4, then we can just slide back. So our position actually very much makes sense. We also repel the enemy forces on this side of the board with our pawns. That's why all of this opening kind of makes sense. It all ties together. And if we sufficiently control this square on e4 with the bishop and the knight, and we sufficiently control this square on e5 with the pawn, the bishop, and the knight, black's counterplay is sort of killed in the center. And the game plan of the London is to, yes, you can just castle, and that's fine, but the central game plan I like to employ is mobilizing directly into the middle, okay, which opens up our queen to then potentially rotate through that available square and target that king side with the bishop right? The queen and the bishop together. And if the knight were to take us, now, by the way, I just hope we're clear. We're not taking this. This is just to plant and then create our attack. But if we are to be taken, we are going to remove this knight from the defense of the king, bring in our pieces. And sometimes we won't castle at all. Yes, you can, but you can also just go directly after this attack. This is the perfect kind of London in a nutshell, but you've only been watching this video for about four minutes. You are not yet ready to do it as much as you want to. This is how it usually works on YouTube. You go and play it, it doesn't work. You come back, you're like, okay. There's a lot of things we needed to go through to get to this position and openings are all about variation, right? Sometimes you might castle short. Sometimes you might castle long. In this case, we didn't do that, right? Now, a lot of things are at play here. First of all, black played c5. If we go all the way back to the beginning of this position, black played this move c5. By the way, white has choices even here. Yes, you can complete your pyramid and play knight to f3 and bishop to d3. In fact, oftentimes c5 in the London, the best response, the second that you see c5, c3. Say that a million times to yourself. c5, c3. c5, c3. However, 
Some of my more advanced players watching, maybe 13, 1400, that's not the only thing you can do. In the London, you can also meet C5 with actually taking it. If you're prepared, because if the opponent tries to win the pawn back, you can hang on to the pawn. If they try to do this, you can defend it with the C pawn. And it's not so, it, and there's a very nasty trap here, by the way. If black plays the move B6, just looking to undermine your pawns, Right? There's bishop takes b8. A nasty, nasty trap. The idea being you would like to give this check. And once you do, the pawn pushes through and the game is over. For example, like this. Will you ever get this? I don't know. Some of my higher rated players might. Beginners, the games can be a little, a little bit more variance in the games. Um, and then c7, of course, by the way, on the next move. And we discovered check, right? So dc5 is actually... A little bit venomous if you know what you're doing there's a whole nother class of moves where the knight comes to c3 that's the jobaba style london you can play the jobaba london as early as this position and try to play knight to b5 i am giving you an overview i am giving you the selection you have the menu now you take it to the next step right i'm not a huge fan of knight c3 although i have played it uh but the idea is to go for the c7 pawn with the bishop fried liver kind of just on the other side uh, but I believe in the pure form of the London. Now, if c5 is not played, right? If c5 is not played, and instead knight to c6 is played, this is terrible. Because black now has no activity on the queen side whatsoever. And if you just play normal with c3, bishop d3, and get that little knight d2, knight f3 action, plant that knight into the middle, you're going to be good to go. Do not be afraid of trading the light squared bishop. It's completely okay. Make forward progress, control these two center squares, and if you're not going to be able to launch an attack, what you'll do further down the line is maybe expand in the center with pawn to e4. But if you win the battle for the center in the London, you will have an advantage as the game progresses, as the game goes on, whether you are attacking or not. Now, let's kind of slow it down a little bit. Knight in front of pawn, terrible. Not good at all. I need you to finish that pyramid and finish your development. But c5 is a pretty challenging move uh and oftentimes it will be associated if you don't take it if you just go for the pyramid approach uh it will be associated with development right behind uh and if you choose not to capture this pawn you're gonna need to know how to play this position so first of all counterplay on your b2 pawn do not blunder the b2 pawn just don't do it you can offer a queen trade this is the most common way to meet this and this queen trade is very interesting you don't want to take and open up their rook. It's usually unlikely that you want to do that. You actually want them to take you. Because then you get your open rook. Now actually you have the advantage. Queenless middle game. It does happen. This is known as the best way according to theory to meet it. And if they play c4, you actually can just slide out of there. You can slide out of there. Because now you've overextended their center. And this break e4 becomes very powerful. Now we're getting into a little bit more intricate kind of analysis of the London system, but that's what you get eight minutes into an overview of the theoretical portion. Um, but generally, queen b6 and c5 is the most critical way to play. You can meet it with a queen trade that's usually very decent. Um, and keen viewers would notice that I've played knight to d2. Knight d2 is more flexible than actually the move knight to f3, particularly against c5. Uh, and that is because the rook has no breathing room if you leave the knight back here, so there's a very good line here for black. If you try the same exact approach, this very tricky move, bishop to f5. This is advanced London territory, but even the beginners can appreciate that if you take this, your rook gets trapped. And that is why you need to play knight d2 first. That's been discovered in the last few years that knight d2 is the critical approach. Um, now another thing, folks, that we've really kind of glossed over... Uh, and what I want you to pay attention to before I play any training games, where's this bishop going? You see, th what I need you to do when you play the London is don't just pre-move all the moves and get your pyramid, bam, 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 doesn't matter. No, actually, every move matters. Do they play c5 at all? Do they play it on the second, third, fourth move? What do they do with this bishop? What do they do with this bishop? If the bishop comes out to f5, yes, you can continue in pyramid style with bishop d3, c3, blah, 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 blah. But personally, I actually very much like that when they leave their light squared bishop, I like to turn this into a queen's gambit. I actually abandon the pyramid plan because when the light squared bishop comes out, the queen, we do the exact same thing they do to us 
to them. C pawn queen, C pawn queen, boom, down to B7. By the way, if you're like at 800, 700, what's gonna happen in some of your games is you're gonna win the whole queen side. Like, you're gonna win everything. You're gonna win the rook, the knight, the pawn, the pawn, trust me. If you're like 13, 1400, probably not. But it's the critical way to play. And you can play knight to C3, you can play queen B3, you can also play rook C1, just so you understand. You can also play rook C1 and just focus the game plan on the queen side, right? But the higher level you are, the chances of you, of you just destroying someone in the first 10 moves, not so high. I know the video is called what it's called, but um, you're going to be battling a little bit longer against some stronger players. Bishop f5 is a perfectly reasonable move. These two plans together, c5 and bishop f5, also perfectly reasonable. But there is a whole class of Londons where they don't move their light square bishop. They just keep it boxed in. And this is my favorite. I mean, if you get a non-C5, non-light squared bishop moving London, oh, it's just, it's all, I mean, it's, the game's all yours. Pyramid them, develop the knight, develop the bishop. And the last question really remaining out here is where their dark squared bishop goes. Uh, if they offer you a trade of dark squared bishops, let's say knight f3, like knight c6 is not great, but let's say this. This is a big question. We've addressed the C pawn, we've addressed the light squared bishop, we've addressed now the dark squared bishop. What do you do? Do not take. Everything about this opening is about the center squares. You just lost the battle, you're never gonna move your knight there. So then it's not on me. No refunds in this, in this video. It's not on me, right? That's, don't do that. You have a couple of options here. I like rocking back because if they take me, I open up my rook and then if they castle, oh, it's over. I'm not castling. Why would I ever castle? Let's just go for an attack, right? You can also just expedite the knight to the middle plan. It's not the most accurate. The stronger players will know how to neutralize this. But trust me, if people here are just autopiloting, right? And just playing like, well, then you're going to finish your pyramid. Now, if they take you, you fork them. And then you just have everything. You've won the battle for e5. You've won the battle for e4. Boom. Queen f3, queen h3. This is everything we ever asked for, right? We just go queen f3, queen h3. We just try to blow them off the board. Um... So, the other option, actually, is to just let them take you on f4. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a advanced one, though. Let them take you on f4, and many people will. You know why? Let's say you play, like, knight d2. They're gonna be like, oh, ho, ho, double pawns, I'm so smart. But actually, this is fantastic for white, because you have dominant control over e5, and, not to mention, in the future, you might also get dominant control of this, and, in the future, if you ever castle, you just control the whole e-file with the rook. Now, yes, they can come and attack you with the queen, but you can defend with the g-pawn or plop your knight in the middle and go, what you gonna do about it? So, meeting the dark squared bishop, personally, I like rocking back. I also like knight jumping in like this, but your knights go to d2 and f3, your bishop comes to d3, and as we wrap up the theoretical portion, it's important, obviously, to address d4 and knight f6, which is the other most popular move. Now, at any moment, they can play d5 again. At any point, they can play it on move two, three, four, whatever. If you play like this, oh, I'm sorry. If you play the London and they don't play d5, the only other thing they could really do here is play g6 or c5. Everything else is bad. If they play this, they have no other choice. They have to play c5 or g6. Um, personally, against g6, I think that instead of playing in traditional style, you should play knight to c3. This is my favorite. And queen d2. And the whole point is that you are going to try to trade this bishop. And if they ever castle in, you will castle long. This is my favorite way to play against the King's Indian when I see a London. Queen with the bishop, long castle, plop a second pawn in the center if they let you. If they let you, most people will not. So most people will play d5, and then you have to play bishop h6. If they trade, that's great. You hang out here. They can't castle anymore. And if they do castle h4, h5 is coming. h4, h5, f3, g4, and you go long. And then you need to build your experience. Obviously, you need to fill in the theoretical gaps. What's the most critical line? This and that. Um, but that's the way I like meeting the King's Indian, and that's actually why I don't like knight f3, because I don't know what they're going to play. This is much more flexible, in my opinion. Now, c5, I have a video already, um, which was a kind of a joke counter to uh, Agad Mator's crushing the London system video. So you should watch as many of my London system videos as you can. Here, there's a couple of ways to play. Um, just defending your center, like this is good. If you remember C5, C3, that mini lesson, not the 
best move order in this particular case. E3 and Knight C3 is good, but this is already a pretty advanced move order. If you're like anywhere about like 13, 1400 and up, um, you could just keep the center closed. Uh, you can actually take, there are some lines, but this is another thing that you need to incorporate if you're gonna play Bishop F4 against Knight to F6. Uh, I'm going to take on some of my viewers now to kind of try to bring some of this home a little bit more. The first person is rated about 700 blitz, but actually 1,100 rapid. Uh, and the next player is about 1,000 points higher than that. So we're going to try to cover uh, the entire uh, rating range, so to speak. And, you know, people are going to be like, well, it's, it's, you're, it's a low-rated player. It's not... Just watch. Okay? Here we go. Actually, 600. Wow. Um, but my opponent is uh, 1030. 10.30 rapid. Okay, d4. So hopefully people don't think I'm just bullying my opponent. Okay, we have g6. So we don't have d5, we don't have knight f6, we have g6. Now, yes, you can play e4 here. Uh, I'm gonna play bishop to f4. And bishop g7. Now, what did I just tell you? Knight c3. My air conditioner started rattling, so um, I had to turn it off. Let's go, uh, let's go put two pawns in the center. That was always the plan. I'm going to let my uh, next opponent know uh, not to play this system. Just so we don't have a repeat. All right. A6. It's kind of a flexible move. I guess the idea is to play B5. I'm just going to castle queenside. <clears throat> B5. Interesting. Uh, the king is stuck in the middle. Uh, I still believe h4, h5 is a decent plan. My, actually, my plan to go here doesn't quite work, right? So this is the way you learn your openings. Uh, and I could crash down the middle. I could play h4, knight f3. It all looks pretty decent, to be honest. I guess I'll just develop a piece. I don't exactly know what the plan is, but if my opponent keeps the king in the center too long, e5 is coming. I'm not too worried about b4, because let's be serious. I have two knights, bishop, queen out. I'm already castled. One pawn wandering in and attacking my knight doesn't scare me a whole lot. Bishop b7 is very reasonable. I can finish developing completely. I can try to launch an attack. I don't know. Uh, everything looks pretty decent. I, I think uh, this is pretty principled. Just try to go forward. Uh, bishop takes f3 actually looks like it wins a pawn. It might because takes and then take on e5. I'm not convinced that's a very safe position. Probably bishop to d3 would have been a little bit more solid, but we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to get into the intermediate mindset here. Like, all right, well, what have I learned from my opening? I learned that I castle long against the King's Indian setup and, uh, mm -hmm. e5 and we'll see what's up. Hopefully you're all doing well, by the way. <clears throat> H6. Very strange setup here by my opponent. <laughs> this is actually good practical experience for anybody watching, because, uh, yeah, this is, this, is, this is really quite unique. I don't know. I mean, I can take. I can play rookie one. So much stuff looks pretty decent here. Also, black is going to kind of not get developed ever at this rate. So, I don't know. Bishop, rookie one. <laughs> uh, I want to take and open up the center, but maybe not yet. Maybe everything looks decent. Let's go rookie one. I don't know, folks. I, I don't know. My opponent is confusing me and hopefully confusing themselves as well. Oh, wow. G5 was the idea. See, I'm, I, the problem with this is that it's mildly... It's mildly unfounded aggression, you know, like uh, th th breaking some principles of the game here. Principles of the game, meaning you're opening the center with your king there. You're overextending your forces without finishing your development. Like right now, I'm not going to trade queens. I hope you, we are on the same page. Uh, I'm going bishop e5 and, and, and rook takes e5. The position is not actually, it's not like dead lost for black or something, but you're always going to suffer, uh, un you know, unpleasant things here. Um, I'm immediately going to go h4 because I know that you're much closer to castling on this side. And the whole point of this kind of attack by me is to play h4 at some point. Uh, I'm monitoring this bishop to make sure that nothing's uh, going on over here. Gh4 is no good. I think, I think black really should go g4. Oh, no. 
oh, this is going to be a short-lived game after castles because now I have queen g5. And now, yeah, now now we really see the problem. Uh, oh, it all fall. No, 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 no. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Well, I mean, that is in a nutshell how you play the London against the Kings Indian. I mean, I wish you can all win your games in, in, in 16 moves via checkmate. Um, that wasn't, uh, it wasn't, uh, let's put it this way, the most traditional way, because my opponent actually really delayed development. Like, they didn't play knight f6, they, they played knight d7. Uh, they shouldn't feel frustrated about that game or anything. Um, by the way, even the engine, the engine here already likes me just going straight down the middle, um, but even here I thought I played kind of logically. Uh, and yeah, the thing is you can't just open the center like this because what happens is I just have too many pieces. I have too many threats. You can cocoon, but I'm gonna jump in and it's it's gonna be a, a short game, right? It's gonna be a short game and I, I want you to have short games that you win, not that you lose. Uh, so if the opponent hadn't played like this and for example had played knight to f6, Queen d2, short castle, long castle, and then played like knight d7. Again, it's either e5 or it's bishop h6. It's a very similar game plan. I can guarantee you about a 60-65% win rate, okay? I can guarantee that um, with this kind of a system. It's just, it, it's, it's so good. You get such decent positions. Uh, let's play our next game. Uh, as I, the reason I puff my cheeks is to stretch my jaw, just in case you wanted to know that. I'm not imitating a blowfish. Uh, the next person is actually my lamp. So I'm playing my lamp. See? D4. Let's go bishop f4. So lamp uh, actually agreed to play the more traditional approach against me, just so we can get some experience. Okay, so step one. Bishop has been blocked in, right? So now I can either play knight f3, bishop d3, or knight d2. Sort of interchangeable. Let's go knight f3. Okay, there is c5. Now... I did mention that c5, c3 is quite decent, right? And now I don't know if Lamp is going to play queen b6. Lamp chooses not to play queen b6. If queen b6 was played, we would have done this. So we're going to go knight d2. Now what is Lamp going to do with his bishop? Okay, bishop d6. I can rock back. I can play knight to e5. Bishop back to g3. And now maybe something with bishop d3. There is a line here, an advanced line, bishop b5 to try to take the knight and then move into this, and it's not an attacking variation, it's a much more positional variation. We're actually, right now, in a very main line theoretical position. Uh, here, b6 is considered the main move. This is already super advanced, but if you're watching and you're high rated, you know what's up. The whole point of rook e8 is to play e5, so of course I will play knight e5, and there is not going to be e5, right? So I could have castled, but the whole point was to play e5. C takes d4, you're going to take with the e pawn. So if c d4, e d4 is what you're trying to do. And by the way, you should credit yourself making it this far. This is very instructive. Why? Because if you take with the c pawn, why isn't your knight on c3? You take with the e pawn to open up your e file. Now, I can play short castle. I can also begin an attack of some sort, like with f4. I don't know which is best. Remember, remember, you're not taking. That's not. That's really not what you're trying to do here. Uh, I'm actually going to castle. So we're going to try to play a little bit more of a positional game because opponent has a light squared bishop that's sort of blocked out. The, we've won the battle for the center. And knight d7 might already be devastating after bishop takes. Oh, we can expedite this attack. Bishop takes h7 I think is winning. Bishop takes h7 is everything this video is all about. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hyped. This might be very good. Now, yes, we are investing quite a bit of material here after bishop takes h7. Um, but queen h5, king g8, and then queen here could be devastating. We're getting in, and it could be very bad. Okay, but opponent just goes king f8, which... Huh. <laughs> that actually... I, I didn't really... Can we take on f7 anyway? Um, King f7, queen h5... Maybe not. Maybe now we just bail out into a slightly better position. Uh, by taking on d7, for example. We also can still probably play queen h5, but then maybe the knight comes back to f6. King f8 is a good move. Actually, it's quite a resourceful defense. Uh, I'm going to play... I think I'm going to play f4. I really want to defend this knight. And if it gets taken, I want to open. Now, if my bishop gets locked in, I'm, I think I'm already just all in. I'm going to sacrifice 
to get it out, get three pawns for the piece and a wide open king. This is typical London stuff, believe it or not. Typical London kind of position can turn into this. Now we're gonna back up and nothing has changed about the position except we won the h7 pawn and now we're already creating a new attack, right? So this is the power of winning the battle of the center because black has nowhere to go. Like black has no initiative on the queen side. We win the center and now we win the king side and oh my goodness, that move does not smell that it's that decent. Uh, I gotta play queen h5, right? I mean, this is, now that's a mate threat. Oop, that's a mate threat. I can also sneak into h7 and I'm gonna bring my second rook and at some point I will push the pawn to f5. Once I push the pawn to f5 with rook and king like this, we're, we're in amazing shape. Just simply amazing shape. I think queen f6 runs into bishop h4. And that should be good for us. But then there might be some equal danger stuff. Wow. Can I take, take and queen to h7? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we gotta shred it open here. We gotta shred it open. Gotta shred it open. Queen h7 threatens mate and mate on g6. So the th it's actually a very brutal move. If I play queen to h7 threatening mate, yeah, so this threatens this and this. So the only way to defend both is maybe rook e7, but then I take and I take. And that's also not very pleasant because at the end I have knight f8. Listen, I love my lamp. Also, the person whose account is Levy's Lamp is a cool, cool guy. Um, but uh, now we're going to win the queen. Uh, London, baby. I mean, you clicked on this video to learn how to crush people with the London. Lamp is a strong player, but this has been a, a, pretty, a pretty fun game. And I would say about 95% of my audience is below that rating. So I actually did a poll once. So hopefully this motivates you and excites you to give this opening a shot. Because I really think that if you master the different intricacies of the London, by the way, as we ignore this and take with discover check, and now it's mate in a few moves. Um, yeah, I think you can be crushing people very similar to this. Uh, if we just quickly back up and briefly analyze this game, uh, it's important to note that by this point, white is already actually positionally almost winning. My opponent made a pretty big mistake taking already. Uh, the way to play this is to take and try to go after this pawn, but also is pretty unpleasant after moves like queen h5 or even queen b1, believe it or not, to try to go for the h7 pawn with the idea of h4 in many positions. First we guard the center, and then we play like h4, h5, and actually white gets an incredibly powerful attack without castling. So folks, you're going to watch this video, right? You made it this far, 27 minutes. You should know a couple of things. Number one, I have a London course, Okay. One of my nine courses, on one of them is on the London system in the Trumpowski. Link is in the description. Uh, you can, you know, use 15% off if you're a first-time customer on the website and all that good stuff. That's if you want to study the theory. It's a lot more in-depth. It's about four hours of just pure video and analysis and a PGN file you can plug into those, uh, you know, those readers or any of those websites that you use. Uh, and you will still have questions after this video. I tried to be as thorough as possible to tell you how the London works and how you need to address opening study. Now, if you wanna take your openings to the next level, you wanna fill in the exact gaps, the specific variations, certain gambits, certain critical lines, you gotta go beyond. You gotta find more in-depth content on the London. This is supposed to get you started, uh, get you excited and uh, point you in the right direction. But from here on out, you should watch my video called how to learn and study chess openings. It'll teach you uh, how to use a database, how to analyze with an engine after you are done practicing an opening in a live game. And this is what you do with all your openings. Hopefully in the last half hour, uh, you have come to learn something brand new, uh, maybe reinforce something that you've already learned or learned a, a new wrinkle in the London that you've already been playing. And from here you go and you practice, you see whether they move their uh, e-pawn out or their light scored bishop out, whether they played c5 or they didn't play c5, whether they're going for a king's Indian or not for a king's Indian. Did you play a certain move order the right way? Did you play a, did you make a certain trade incorrectly? And so on and so forth. I hope you enjoy. Thanks for sticking with me for the uh, last half hour and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, get out of here. Oh, before I go, actually, if there's any other openings you want me to cover and I haven't made a video on it yet, let me know in the comments. You know what to do.